Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Dr. Carter, I'm, I uh, am going to revisit a little bit of the ground that we covered this morning, but I want to uh, make a suggestion. I would urge that you, upon your assumption of this position, undertake a, a uh, an all-agency review of the policy with regard to the uh, uh, leaving of Afghanistan uh, and talk to General Campbell, the military people, the intelligence people, the State Department, uh, because uh, like many of the members here, I'm gravely concerned uh, that we will uh, miss uh, uh, an opportunity to preserve what we've gained in Afghanistan. Uh, yeah, I, think I was going to say we're in danger of fumbling the ball on the five-yard line. I think a better example might be we're in danger of throwing a pass when you have uh, uh, Lynch in the backfield uh, on the one-yard line. We've gained a lot, and uh, to lose it in the end because of a, a, an accelerated uh, departure schedule that doesn't really fit the requirements on the ground I think would be tragic. Uh, we have a partner that wants to work with us now. Uh, we have the uh, security forces that are standing up and taking casualties, uh, but they're going to need some additional support, particularly in the authorities under our air uh, uh, system. And uh, I, I would urge you to to be uh, to to have such a review and to really be very strong uh, with the White House. Uh, uh, you mentioned that you will be candid. I hope you'll be candid to the point of being annoying. And what's the worst thing they can do? Appoint you to be Secretary of Defense. I mean, uh, you know. Uh, so please, uh, uh, this is, I think this is of some urgency. Um, number two, you, in, in answer to a question, you mentioned that you were inclined to support uh, additional arms to uh, Ukraine. And, and I share that position. On the other hand, uh, we don't live in a static world. And the danger is. Uh, we supply arms, uh, Putin sees those arms and matches them and raises us uh, to some extent. Uh, uh, and I wondered with your history of, of studying geopolitical issues, strategy and the like, if you could elaborate a little bit on, on that challenge. Uh, if, we could, if we could arm the Ukrainians and, and give them some strategic advantage, I think that would be great. The problem is we can't rely on the Russians not responding in some way, and then you're in an escalation situation. Your thoughts, please. Thank you, Senator. And, and uh, I, I like and remembered, and I think I have used subsequently your expression, fumbling the ball on the five-yard line. Um, I was superseded by the Super Bowl uh, uh, metaphor, I understand. But uh, I, 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 uh, this is uh, a war that um, we have... Uh, carried all those yards, uh, and so I. With, I, with some I will, very substantial progress. Yeah, well, very, very substantial progress. We now have a partner in Ashraf Ghani uh, that uh, is very positive. So I promise you, I will uh, keep working at it, keep an open mind, and uh, tell it like I see it uh, in you. Afghanistan. With respect to Ukraine, you raise an excellent question. And I think it is true that in, in, in strategy and working on these international problems, you always have to ask yourself not the next step, but what's the step after that? So what happens after? And to your question, I, two observations, uh, Senator. One is that I think that uh, much as I incline in the direction I indicated this morning, the economic and political pressure on Russia has to remain the main center of gravity of our effort at pushing back. Um, and the Europeans are critical to that. So European solidarity and NATO solidarity are critical in this regard, as they are to all of European security and to dealing with the problem of, of, of Putin. Uh, the, uh, uh, the other uh, thought uh, that uh, comes to mind is that um, <clears throat> This is, uh, uh, as I consider what kinds of uh, assistance we may give to the Ukrainian military, uh, one that does need to think two and even three steps ahead in this matter. So your, your point is very well taken. I, I, I would uh, Thank you. suggest an, an article in yesterday's Financial Times that talks about this, just this issue that I think you would find uh, interesting and, and informative. And I'm not expressing a, a conclusion, but I just think we have to think hard about 
as you say, uh, one, two, and three, and four steps down the down the chess game. A uh, final point, and, and I'm close to out of time, I, I want to reiterate, I think Senator Shaheen mentioned, the, the chairman very articulately and, and forcefully expressed the problem with procurement and money. I'm also focused on the problem with procurement and time. Uh, Senator Inhofe had a chart recently that, from DARPA that showed in 1975, it took about the same time to bring a new automobile, a new commercial aircraft, and a, and a military aircraft from concept to, to operation, about six years, five and a half, six years. Today, those lines have wildly diverged, and the, 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 air, the, the automobile is down to two years. Commercial aircraft is up to about seven, but a military aircraft is up to 23 years, and that just won't do. Uh, in terms of, you know, we're going to be building obsolete technology. And so I would urge you, as you focus quite rightfully on cost, uh, to also uh, look at how do we bring these products to market, if you will, or to, to operability in a, in a shorter time, A, so we can meet the needs of the, of the exigencies of the moment, but also so that we're, we're not getting obsolete technology just because of the lapse of time. And I, I know you're aware of this. I just urge you to, to focus on that as well as the cost. I, I will do so, and I completely agree with you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank Chairman. Thank you.